Good morning, everyone. It is November 3rd, the first Tuesday in November, which means it's also election day for the United States. We will pray for, for that as we get to our prayers a little bit later. But for now, let us join in morning prayer. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings and life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Satisfy us in the morning with your steadfast love, O God, that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Praise the blessed and holy Trinity, one God who gives us life, salvation, and resurrection. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Give glory to God, our light and our life. O come, let us worship and praise. Be still and know that I am God. As we continue in our Places Along the Way Meditations on the Journey of Faith, today we are in Persia. So here is a tower of Persia. And we are moving into Isaiah chapter 44. So we're jumping over quite a bit of the Bible to get to Persia here. But this is during all those conquests that have happened. 24 through 7. So chapter Isaiah 44, beginning with the 24th verse. So this is, they are in um, captivity, um, Babylonian and now Persia. And there is an issue with Cyrus coming in, um, who will be called savior for them. So they are not forgotten. Thus says the Lord, your redeemer, who formed you in the womb. I am the Lord who made all things. Who alone stretched out the heavens, who by myself spread out the earth, who frustrates the omens of liars and makes fools of diviners, diviners, who turns back the wise and makes their knowledge foolish, who confirms the word of his servant and fulfills the prediction of his messengers, who says of Jerusalem, it shall be inhabited, and of the cities of Judah, they shall be rebuilt, and I will rise up their ruins who says to the deep, be dry, I will dry up your rivers, who says of Cyrus, he is my shepherd, and he shall carry out all my purpose. And who says of Jerusalem, it shall be rebuilt, and of the temple, your foundations shall be laid. Thus says the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have grasped, to subdue nations before him, to, and strip kings of their robes, to open doors before him, and the gates shall not be closed. I will go before you and level the mountains. I will break in pieces the doors of bronze and cut through the bars of iron. I will give you the treasures of darkness and riches hidden in secret places, so that you may know that it is I, the Lord, the God of Israel, who call you by your name. For the sake of my servant Jacob, and Israel, my chosen, I call you by your name, I surname you, though you do not know me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. Besides me, there is no God. I arm you, though you do not know me, so that they may know from the rising of the sun, from the west, and from the west, that there is no one beside me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. I form light and create darkness. I make wheel and create woe. I, the Lord, do all these things. There is so much history going on in that little bit there. So let's see what the Martys have to say. The Lord said to Cyrus, he is my shepherd and he shall carry out my purpose. Persia is unnamed in today's text, but we recognize the place because we know that Cyrus was the first to rule there. Cyrus did what kings do. 
He built towered fortresses and strong walls from which his armies marched to conquer. He called himself king of the world, great king, legitimate king. The God he did not recognize or even know had other names for him. However, my shepherd and the anointed of the Lord. From that naming, we learn much about how God governs our human affairs. When Persia became the challenger to Babylon, Cyrus came to be the agent of rescue for exiled Israel. He was the human who made their return from Babylon possible. He was the divine instrument. God named Cyrus, though Cyrus could not name God. This is astonishing. Cyrus worked the purpose of God, though he did not know God. Maybe we, we should not readily discuss secular leaders as merely secular or think of governments as being godless. They can serve the purposes of God. Where do people fit who do not know God, who do not believe in the Lord, and yet serve divine intentions? Today we will be open to seeing the care of God through all sorts of people, and we will see such people differently. We may even associate rulers not merely with towers and fortresses and armies, but with liberating policies as God guides them. Our souls are not satisfied by the actions of those who do not know God, nor have these people come to saving health, but their works of government and justice, of leadership and care, serve the purposes of God. Help us recognize your work, O Lord, in the acts of those who, not yet knowing you, do your work of justice in the world. Amen. So the, the kind of expanses of this are the, and especially the book of Isaiah, you have the before exile, the during exile, and the after exile. The before exile um, is actually a reading in a few weeks for us, Isaiah 6, when Isaiah is called, saying, if you keep doing this, you're going to, you're going to be taken away into exile. And so the Assyrians come in, the Babylonians, the, now the Babylonians actually, Assyrians kind of wipe out the Northern Kingdom. The um, Babylonians take the Southern Kingdom, the leaders at least, the farmers they have pretty much left, but the leaders into exile, um, into Babylon. And then Cyrus and the Persians came and took over, but then also brought the the religious and political leaders of Israel back into Jerusalem, um, wanting to have the the force that is under the people that are under them have their leaders and just be beholden to Persia. So a lot of politics are actually in the Bible. A lot, I mean, for say for all of us who say you know separate um, politics and religion, especially we're on of the ironies of ironies, we are on election day today. There is a lot of politics in the Bible of, I mean, even um, is, uh, Jesus between the Herodians and the, the, um, the high priest and Pilate and all of these, why he was actually crucified. Yes, it was the religious leaders, but it was also the political leaders. And that's what they appealed to of saying, this is gonna be a zealot and upstart. He's gonna call it, cause distress in our, in our region of the world, in your, your responsibility to the Romans and the Herodians. So it's all there. And then this story is so unlikely that Israel, it's, it's not like in Moses where God raises up somebody who's kind of that between an Israel, uh, an Israelite, a Hebrew and a, um, an Egyptian, you know, born Hebrew, raised Egyptian and sent them back who kind of understands how to navigate the system. This is somebody completely outside who had never heard of God before. Persia was way over there and coming in through and calling Cyrus the Messiah. That should be offensive to us. It's meant to be offensive. It was offensive even to Cyrus <laughs> to be called that. And yet, an instrument of God's will. Now we always have to be careful with this because there's so many false prophets and those who would hearken to say that I am the anointed of God. Um, if you anoint yourself, I don't think it's really an anointing. Um, but God uses our leaders, all of them in different ways, either um, to bring us closer to God or to bring justice or to bring liberation or to bring things to a point where we lift up as well our voices. It's complicated. This story is complicated, but Israel needed 
to be freed again. They needed to be returned home and God had made a promise. So the one most likely to affect that change, God lifted up and called him Messiah. Not Messiah as in the sense that we have in Christ of savior of our sins, but deliverer, the, the chosen one of God for this task. Maybe one way to think about it is that our leaders have callings too. You know, I'm, I'm called as a pastor. Some of you have been called as teachers, as nurses, as community organizers, as um, politicians, um, as brewmasters, as engineers, as so many different vocations you've been called and you serve God in your community in those capacities. So what is it like to also have, have, for those who have the vocation of leadership and those who God uses to shepherd us? Some, and many times the hard part about the story is that they're not always aware that God is using us. Hit them. We are not always aware that God is using us. To be open to the, the understanding in this coming day, week, weeks, that God is using you to preserve life, to care for your neighbor, to bring, to speak justice, to speak hope, to remind us uh, ourselves that God has not forgotten us. That God's peace is one where God is working in and through all things. And as we've talked before, sometimes we won't see that. There's a hiddenness at times about God's work, but there will be times where um, a peace that surpasses all understanding will return our hearts and our minds to Christ, where we do have peace, where we have hope, where we have a place to, to be centered and then to be sent out into whatever the world is in the coming weeks. And that God will work through our leaders, whoever they may be. Be still and know that I am God. You have been born anew through the living and abiding word of God. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Mighty God of mercy, we thank you for the resurrection dawn, bringing the glory of our risen Lord who makes every day new. Especially we thank you for the sustaining goodness of your creation, for the provision that you continue to give us and that we read about today, about how in all, throughout time you have provided, you provided us with safety in our wildernesses and provision. You've provided us with leaders who will get us through and return us home. You provided us with community with whom we can work and strive to mutually care for one another. Thank you for the many ways that we can name and that we sometimes fail to see that you continue to act in our lives and in that of creation. For the new creation in Christ and all gifts of healing and forgiveness, we pray, may you create us anew, Lord, each and every day, giving us your forgiveness, giving us your light, giving us your life. May you heal those in our community who are um, suffering this day, suffering from physical illness, suffering from um, mental and emotional turmoil, suffering from um, economic challenges, and may you heal these situations, these people who are in need of you today. May you be their hope. May you bring to their side those that can help them through to this side, the other side of the current challenges they face. For the gifts of relationship with others, Lord, today especially a day that can divide that can see, feel cataclysmic for so many people, may we be reminded that you are here, 
that you're in the midst of all of our relationships. May you open our hearts and our ears, maybe quiet our mouths a little bit, or our fingers as we type in those chat comments, um, so that we edify, so that we care, so that we're kind. Not that we're silenced, Lord, but that we, we communicate. And when we can't find the right words, may we share what we feel. And may the people around us and we for others be receptive to those words and those feelings. May you use this time, Lord, to build us up, to bring us closer than ever before. For the communion of faith in your church, we give thanks. We give thanks that what unites us, Lord, is our need of you. <laughs> that your love and forgiveness for us is the center of who we are as a church. And it's where we return to, that we all, all of us, need your word. And that's the communion we have, faith that you've given us. Not that we can create on our own, but that you gift to each and every one of us. And you form us into your body. and in our diversity of so many things, we give thanks that we are one in you. Merciful God of might, renew this weary world, heal the hurts of all your children and bring about your peace for all in Christ Jesus, the living Lord. Especially we pray for those who govern nations of the world. We pray for President Trump and Vice President Pence. We pray for um, Biden and Harris. We pray for um, our country today in the midst of elections, for our citizens who are voting and, and you, if you will, sending a, the, a love letter to our country that we, our country is ours. And we give thanks, Lord, for your work throughout history in our country. With your true, word, true words of law and gospel, but always um, providing May you provide in these coming days for us. We also pray for our election here in Washington for governor and for everybody up and down the tickets, both federally and state and local, locally. Be with us as we look into what will be happening in 2021 and in these times of transition. For countries ravaged by strife or warfare or COVID-19, we pray may your peace also be with them. May you rise up leaders that can help them go through these challenging times. For all who work for peace and international harmony, we give thanks. And for all who strive to save the earth from carelessness and destruction, we ask you to give them the stamina to continue. And for the Church of Jesus Christ in every land, thank you for your word, your hope, your peace not ours, but it's gifted to us from, by you. And we give thanks that you are the one who creates that in us. Oh God, you have called your servants to ventures of which we cannot see the ending, by paths as yet untrodden through perils unknown. Give us faith to go out with good courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us and your love supporting us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless and preserve us this day. Amen.